This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, did she want a baby? You got pregnant on purpose. Yes. Just to be on TV? I did not get pregnant to be on a TV show. Then why aren't you raising your baby? Kayla signed custody of the baby over to me. Now I'm raising my daughter's son. While the families are fighting. Why do you say she is a psycho grandmother? No, he's the psycho. She's a mindless idiot. Where's the father? I have no feelings for the girl. You said I got 5,000 Facebook friends. Can I brag about that? You have a child because you were immature and you want to smart mouth me, boy? Teen mama drama. You need to grow up and you need to keep your pants zipped up, slick. Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Pretty great. Take it. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. thought being underage, unmarried, and pregnant would not only be a trend, but would make you a celebrity. Today we're going to talk about teens and their train wreck annex, DUIs, prison, drugs, physical abuse, and even child neglect that have become phenomenally popular. Now my first guest, Kayla, is a big fan of these shows, and she got pregnant when she was just 16 years old. Her mom suggests she did it on purpose. Take a look. When Kayla told me that she was pregnant, I was stunned. I'm like, oh no, please, don't, don't do this. I like to watch a lot of pregnant teen reality shows. I contacted 16 and Pregnant after I found out I was pregnant. I watched the show, so I mean, I figured it'd be cool to be on the show. We told her no. Of course, she was upset because she's a spoiled brat. I feel that they got pregnant on purpose. I do believe that the reality show was a large, large part of her getting pregnant. That, it's ridiculous. I did not get pregnant to be on a TV show. After Milo was born, my life changed. I couldn't party like I used to. I couldn't hang out with my friends either. She was frantic. I was watching an episode of Teen Mom one day. Janelle wanted to live out her teen life. She thought it'd be a lot better if she gave custody of her son over to her mom. And I figured, you know, maybe that is a good idea. Kayla came to me and said that she wanted to be 17 again and, and not a mother. I bawled. I mean, literally bawled. Kayla decided to sign custody of the baby over to me. Now I'm raising my daughter's son. Kayla would rather hang with her friends and party. What teen mom doesn't wish that they could have part of their life back? Jill and I are doing the bulk of raising Milo. We're the ones that are there at night when he wakes up. We're the ones that feed him. <laughs> she lives with her dad because she doesn't get along with anybody in the house because she wants to be a bitch. Kayla treats Milo just like she would a pet. She pets it for a while, then moves on. She doesn't want to do the laundry or clean the bottles. She wants to take him and show him off to all her friends. We would like her to be a lot more involved with her son's life, but unfortunately, she has attitude. She's mean. My mom doesn't understand me because she's not in my situation. She wasn't a teen mom. She doesn't know what this is like. Hmm. OK, now, let me, let me just be sure that I have this right from the beginning and understand I just call these things as I see them. You got pregnant, and you had a baby. Mm -hmm. Then why aren't you raising your baby? I honestly think that, you know, I gave my son to my mom because I thought it'd be the best situation for him. You know, taking on a pregnancy, you know, when you're so young is stressful, and at the time, like, I couldn't deal with it. I was going through so okay, much. If you know that now, what the hell are you doing getting pregnant then? I don't know. <laughs> No, seriously, come on. 
Come on, there's some point at which you've got to start taking some kind of credible position. What did you do? Did you get pregnant on purpose? It honestly depends on how you look at it. Like, I did not get pregnant to be on a TV show, but at the time, you know, it's not like Vincent and I were like, yes, let's get pregnant and have a baby, but, you know, it's not like we did anything to prevent it either. So would that be a yes? <laughs> sure. You got pregnant on purpose? Yes. You, you had the class, or you read it, somebody told you, if he puts his in hers, that you wind up getting pregnant? Yeah. I mean, that's a fairly basic premise, right? Mm -hmm. And you knew that, so you got pregnant on purpose? Yes. Okay, so let's decide why. There's two reasons, or three, that you could have got pregnant on purpose. One, you wanted to be on some stupid television show. No. <laughs> two, you wanted to trap your boyfriend because you have a baby with him, then he's got to love you and stay with you for the rest of your life, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Or three, you just thought you'd bring somebody in this world that you could wear like jewelry that would have to love you the rest of your life. Now, those are three choices I have. Which one is closest to true for you? Um, it, honestly, it'd have to be the second one. You thought you would trap him? And Not he trap. he would love you forever? Not trap. But Vincent and I, you know, had thought that Pretty much that we'd be stuck in each other's lives forever. Maybe not necessarily together, but... You want that? Does he? Probably now we both don't want that. Are you still in love with him? Hmm. I don't know. Well, that'd be a yes. Okay. Sit with those thoughts for a minute. And I appreciate your candor. I mean, at least you're being honest in the moment. So you have a baby. Yes. He's nine months old. And you're raising, you have legal custody of him. Yes. Why should she have to raise your baby? She shouldn't have to. But you, you gave her, you gave him to her. Yeah, because I thought that it'd be best for Milo. That's why you did it? Yeah. Well, you told my producers you did it because you saw some chick on some MTV show that gave hers to her mother, so you thought that would be a good thing to do. I mean, yeah, you have to look at it as I'm doing what's best for my son. Like, I, at the time, I don't think... I don't have a job. I failed out of cosmetology school. You didn't have a job when you got pregnant. So did it ever occur to you then? No. So did you plan when you had this baby to raise it and be happy forever after? Yeah. Just you and the baby and, and Vincent? Yeah. Y'all were just going to go over and just going to make a little nest and just cozy up over there and just raise your little family and just be cute. Yeah. But nets, nests cost money. Yeah. And money takes jobs. Now, you filled out an application to be on 16 and Pregnant? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, here's... We got a copy of your submission to get on the Pregnant Teen Reality Show. She said, My name is Kayla. I'm a junior in high school. I'm 16 and Pregnant. My boyfriend, Vincent, is a freshman in high school. So he's even younger than you. Yeah. He's very young and immature. He doesn't know how to handle this. Vince and I are in love and plan on being together forever. I'm scared to face my disappointed parents. I would like to be on 16 and pregnant. So you think she got pregnant to get on the show? I believe that that had a lot to do with do the reason think why so? she's pregnant. Yes. You that's think so true. for sure? Yes. What's not true? That I got pregnant on purpose to be on a show? Like, that's... I honestly think that's ridiculous because it's not even like... I was for sure going to be on the show yet, oh, so why would someone... Ridiculous isn't a big enough word to describe <laughs> everything that's gone on here, but you're right. To get pregnant, to be on a show would be ridiculous. Next, we're going to meet Kayla's ex, Vincent, and we're going to find out why the heck he didn't use a condom. I mean, come on. You've got to know what's going to happen and how he feels about the pregnant teen reality show that Kayla wanted him to go on, and then we're going to find out why she isn't on it. We'll be right back. Vincent and I were dating for about four or five months before I got pregnant. The condoms that Vincent and I were using, we didn't really like those. And so Vincent had suggested that we just don't use them. It sucks knowing that Kayla will be part of my life for the rest of my life. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil, hot headed husbands. When Kayla pushes me too far, they hit it. Now, how would you feel about it? Slaps you down out of the chair. Abused wives. If you knew then what you know now, would you have married him? Yes, because I love him. He blames her. You wouldn't slap her if she didn't nag so much. Yes. For making him violent. Do you think it is a reasonable position? No! They're entitled to their opinion. Ask me if I care about their opinion. No, I don't. Then on Thursday, 
she admits she hates her daughter. You said that you have spanked her until you are out of breath. And if you think that is child abuse, then you don't know what child abuse is. That's Thursday. I think Vincent and I are good parents. I feel frustrated that she's not here helping us raise her baby. I think I'm pulling my load when it comes to taking care of Milo. I don't think we're doing anything wrong right now. Lately, she's been a total bitch. She doesn't have patience with Milo. I think we're setting a good example for Milo. What scares me the most about this situation is not knowing how long it will be before she does become responsible. Well, that was Jill, who won custody of her teen daughter Kayla's baby and is now raising nine-month-old Milo. <laughs> Uh, and she's doing it pretty much without her daughter's help. Now, Kayla was two years ahead of Vincent in high school when she found out she was having his baby. Then she tried to get him to appear on a pregnant teen reality show as soon as she realized they were going to become parents. Take a look. Vincent and I were dating for about four or five months before I got pregnant. I was like on the edge of breaking up with her and then she told me she loved me. I kind of felt bad so I stayed with her. The condoms that Vincent and I were using, we didn't really like those. And so Vincent had suggested that we just don't use them. I wasn't worried at all about her getting pregnant because my brother's always done it with different girls. So like I was like, wow, like if he can go that long without getting a girl pregnant, still hasn't, I guess I could. Well, I kind of jinxed myself about that. <laughs> I guess she always wanted to be famous. Being on a TV show like six and pregnant to me is lame. I think it's best that we're apart because neither of us can get along. She's the devil. She's a bad person. I don't see any chances of us getting back together. Kayla is still in love with me. He's cocky. He's very self-centered. I've reached 5,000 friends on Facebook. I have over 700 friend requests waiting. I think Kayla wants to be with me because she can't do better than me, to be honest. He loves to think that he's the hottest thing out there. I have no feelings for the girl. I don't care who she hooks up with, I don't care who she dates. My most recent boyfriend and I broke up because of Vincent. Vincent made it impossible for my ex-boyfriend and I to be together. He thought he was going to hurt me. So my instinct was to mm, give him a beat down. I beat him up. It sucks knowing that Kayla will be part of my life for the rest of my life. Why are you not raising this baby? I didn't get the chance to. Didn't you say you didn't want to? Never said that. So you do want to? Yeah. She gave custody to Jill. I fought for custody and I lost. You fought or, or your I, father fought? We both did. So you want this baby? I want this baby. You, you want to raise this baby? I want to raise that baby. Yeah. I and where, where do you live? Do you I live, live with, on your own or with your I parents? I live with my dad and my stepmother. So you live at home? Yes. You're still in school? Yes. Uh -huh. So if you raise the baby, then that means your parents raise the baby? Um, because you got to go to school. Well, while I'm at school, yeah, but when I get home, it's up to me, I guess. Uh -huh. Do you have a job? Nope. Looked a lot and still haven't found a job. So you don't have money for formula, diapers, medicine, doctor visits, parents. clothes, food? My parents help my sister. They can help me. You guys had unprotected sex, right? Yeah. Why? Obviously. Um. I was 15 at the time um, when well, we started using condoms at first. And I guess this kind of sounds stupid, but one day we just ran out. <laughs> we just ran out, right. You had a whole pack in your top drawer. And they were all gone. Not because of us. Uh, so you have 5,000 friends on Facebook? Not me. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I deleted some people, but almost there. So 5,000 friends, so you're pretty famous. No, I'm not famous, but... And you said you have a lot of people waiting, standing by, in line to... to get, how many did you say? Like, like 600. 600? Friend request. I, how, how do so many people... I don't know, to be honest. Me and my brother... Well, Facebook, obviously, but... I don't know, me and my brother... And my friend got really popular last summer. Well, if you've got 600 people waiting to be friends, I don't know 600 people. <laughs> Seriously, I don't, I don't know, know 600 000. people. What? I don't know 5,000. Yeah. And how do you two get along? On um, and off. She, I can get along with her, but sometimes she just says something and just 
gets to and, me. And it doesn't have to be anything. It like, anything gets to me. I just, that makes any sense. Like, it'll just be, like, something little or anything. Like, we can go, like, a half an hour being fine. But then something that has nothing to do with him, nothing to do with either of us, I'll say, and he'll just snap. Freak out on me, start being mean. Like, we will be in such a public place, and he'll cause a scene in front of everybody. Cause a scene? I tell you, get away from me. That's not causing a scene. Oh, and is it not causing a scene when we're hanging out with a group of people? Raise your hand if you've had sex with Kayla. <clears throat> like, well, what? Well, For no reason. We were doing fine. Some guy says, oh, you had sex with Kayla, you had sex with Kayla, I had sex with Kayla. So you have to, like, act on it and be mean, too, just because someone else is doing it? Like, what are you doing, following the crowd? Not following the crowd, just... Kind of Being mean. Embarrass you. Yeah. Well, he says that you had sex with a new boyfriend when you were seven months pregnant. Yes. And that that's what caused you to deliver the baby prematurely. Where are you when all this is going on? I was at home <laughs> trying to keep a better grip on her, and that was impossible. She, her dad had custody of her. Um, she lived at a different household even, other than where her father lived. So it, it was real difficult. She was in her own world, doing her own thing. So you don't have pregnancy. custody of her? No. Why? She wanted to live with her dad because her dad basically lets her do what she wants to do. All right, we have to take a break. When we come back, Vincent's father is furious that neither Kayla nor Vincent are raising Milo. We'll be right back. Lewis thinks differently than most people. With Lewis's feelings towards us, what if they take Milo one day and like not bring him back? I'd be devastated. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues, how you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. Coming in two weeks, she wanted to be the world's biggest bride until Dr. Phil tried to save her life. Your chance of seeing 50, in my opinion, is almost zero. Now, a house call to the weight loss clinic. You could have, should have lost more weight than what you have. You won't believe who is trying to sabotage her. While you're here, he wants you to gain weight. Coming in two weeks. Well, Kayla is 18 and had a baby with her ex-boyfriend, Vincent, who's only 17. Now, Kayla's mother, Jill, has custody of Milo and is raising the baby with her boyfriend, Mike. Now, Vincent is not happy about that arrangement, and his father, Louis, well, he just says he's furious. Louis's feelings towards us angers me because he doesn't know us. We're not bad people. We're taking care of a baby because we want what's best for him. It's nappy time. Jill is a bitch. I highly suspect that they are going to raise Milo as the son they never had together. I didn't want Vincent to have custody of Milo because he's immature. I really believe babies need to be with their mothers. Aw, oh, sleepy baby. I don't want Jill to have custody of Milo because she's not his mother. We ended up going to court. Lewis feels they should have custody, although he's home maybe two days a month. Jill said a lot of negative things about Vincent. I felt that Milo was better off in our care. Vincent was told to read a caption from Facebook. 
He used my Facebook against me. I had to read it to everyone in the courtroom. Does it look like a dumbass? And if I did, it wouldn't fit in the picture. Ask your mom or some, something along those lines. <laughs> Tasteless. Does that make you a bad father? No. The judge actually found Vincent to be immature and stated him to be an unfit father. Jill has used the legal system to kidnap my grandson from his parents. The judge ruled in our favor. We have custody of Milo. I don't want anything to do with Jill and Mike anymore. This gives Kayla the opportunity to be a part of Milo's life and ample opportunity to become a mother. What's on your shirt? I don't think I would help Jill if she was burning on a cross. Milo needs to be raised by his parents, not by some psycho grandmother that wants to be somebody's hero. Okay, well, you've met all the players involved in this, and, and now we're meeting Lewis, who is Vincent's father. And, I mean, we've got to be trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong in this deal. I promise you by the end of the show, you're going to know who I think that is and who I think is doing the right thing and what needs to take place. Lewis, you, you said you agreed to do the show for basically one reason, right? And that was to make her look like an idiot. No. You didn't say that? No, she, uh, she does that naturally. <laughs> yes, by raising a nine-month-old for your child, she makes herself Vincent, look like an idiot. Shouldn't that be your job? Should the mom? Vincent. Yeah, but if it's Vincent. the best place for our son, <clears throat> I don't see... Like, honestly, if you look at it as you don't have a job Vincent. either, you're I... still in high school. What do you think needs to happen here? God gave them the gift of paternity and with responsible adults. Vincent and Kayla should be raising their child, not take them away like a Nintendo game when they don't behave. You gotta be there for your kids every single day of your life. No matter what failures well, they Who are encounter. the responsible adults here? You said as responsible adults raising a child. Who are the responsible adults here? It could have been Jill. My wife and I have helped my daughter raise her her daughter so far and we're doing quite well so do y'all want to take the baby and raise it since day one he was there the day he was born next to him on the incubator why do you say she is a psycho grandmother no he's the psycho he's the psycho? she's a mindless idiot <laughs> why do you say that based on their actions and all of the postings i have read from her to my wife. Yeah, let's just cause problems when we have a child. Right, Do me on. a favor, hold shut on. your mouth. Let people uh, speak uh, when uh, it's their turn. Hold on, hold um, on. I was told I could interrupt hold you, so on. I'll do as I please. Hold on. I'm 18 years old. Hold on. We'll be right back. Live. What? What did you just say? Say that again. Closed captioning provided by... You told someone on my staff before you came out here that you were going to push them, push them, and push them, and try to get him to snap. Oh, yeah. It okay. doesn't take long. Okay. What kind of goal is that to have? Why do you want to make him snap? I don't want to make him snap. He's already done that in front of my grandson. She can bear witness to that. Th that's what Here you I'm told sure. our staff member before yeah. you came out here. You said... I, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing on him and oh, yeah. pressuring him until he snaps. Yeah. You said that you came you know, here for one reason, to make her look like an idiot. And yet you say that you're the mature individual that sh this baby should be turned over to? Yeah, so far, yeah. And I'll tell you how. I mean, seriously, come on. How does that, how does that make sense? All right. Let's talk about it. Do you remember going to get a paintbrush for your hair back in June, and he came into the room yelling after you, telling you to get out? He was he... not screaming. Whatever she says, there is two people that can bear, bear witness to that. Okay. And I think that yelling in front of my grandson, it's not the proper thing to do. So why does Vincent call me yelling at me a lot when he has Milo? Calling you Vincent, when I have Milo. Vincent, don't answer her. No, no, We're no, talking no, to Dr. Phil here. Okay. The thing I... of it is, is... 
she has posted many messages where she doesn't want to take care of my grandson. Lie. What? Flat out lie. You're a liar. Okay, what, what did I have you evidence. know? I, what did you just say? Say that again. She has posted she doesn't want to take care of my grandson. She doesn't want to raise my grandson. You if that was true, why liar. wouldn't we just give you, you guys you custody? You definitely messaged Denise saying that. No. Oh, you did it? Yes, oh, yes, yes. Right. You, you sent someone a message that said, I don't want to raise this baby. No. I would love to see that right now. Yeah. Can we get it? Picture. Don't you have it? Whose page is this on? Um, she messaged my stepmother saying, I do not want to raise another baby. Which then you kind of took him away from me. Took him away from you. You never had him to take away from. Well, you gave up custody. We fought. Because that's what's best. Look at it, Vincent. We're teenagers. We don't have jobs. I fell out of high school. You're still in high school. What makes you think that either of our parents... Sh well, like, uh, Dr. Phil, this man has instructed his son to not even come to the door I, to pick up my Milo idea. for that visitation. Was, that was my Denise idea. Denise said it was his choice. After custody, I never wanted to talk to you guys again. Never wanted to speak to you guys again or anything. Yeah, again. he That's doesn't take the response. Oh, so when I walked in your house, did I say a word to you or her? I took Milo and I left. Let me tell you about responsibility, Dr. Phil. <laughs> this past Friday, she informed my wife that she was flying to California on Sunday on his visitation day and he would not get to see his son. You, you have three times a week you can see the child? Yeah. Do you come three times a week? Three times a week. So you're there three times, every time you get a chance since, to see the baby? Since court, I haven't seen him three times a week? Sometimes two. Oh, I missed one day. Well, it's um, a... You definitely, didn't you, go, didn't you go three Dr. weeks Phil. without seeing so him? So if you, got, if you and you your, to... your wife, but not his mother, correct? This is yeah. his stepmother? Okay. I'm not, not doing anything wrong with that. I'm just right, to right, clear right. the family tree. So you, you two would, would raise this baby and what would be... No, 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 no. We would help him raise his baby. He's doing quite well right now when he comes over. When Milo Milo comes over to my house, he takes over. He feeds him. He changes his diaper. He puts him down for a nap. He plays with him. And we happen to, to be there to share with him. He's the one that has been taking care of his son all along. Okay. When I say provide for, I mean yes. you're, you're going to provide the roof, yeah. food, yeah. the clothes, the money for doctor yeah. visits transportation, yes. all of those sort of things. He can put them down for the nap, but you're going to provide yes, every, until every he is able to get on And his you're hand. willing to do that? Yes. Can you afford to do it? Yes. Uh -huh. And so why did the judge deny you that right? I wasn't there. Um, I you mean rather... you didn't show up for the hearing? No, no, no. At that point, uh, the attorney had decided just to go with him for the... Uh, he wasn't even there. So the, the, the custody decision custody was, is it going to be him having custody or them having custody? Not them, her, because she has given up custody of right. her son already. Okay. So it was between Jill and Vincent? Yes. Okay. And the judge said he thought it was in the child's best interest to be with her instead of him. Yeah. And do you think that was the wrong decision? Based on the information the judge had so far, yes. Do you, do you think he made a mistake? He should not have done that. I'm, he not, gonna, have I'm not gonna tell you that I think the judge made a mistake based on the information he had at the time. Yes, uh, I think the judge made a correct decision, but there has been more development since, and I think the judge should be able to hear the rest of the story and possibly reconsider his decision. Well, we'll certainly send him a copy of the show. Seriously, I, I want him to hear it all. I, I, I want would, him to hear what everybody here said to say, that. including me. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stop wasting time scrolling through endless clickbait, social media, and emails trying to keep up with the news. Instead, listen to all the news you need in just 10 minutes. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. The Newsworthy podcast makes it faster, easier, and more enjoyable to get unbiased news on the go. It helps us navigate the news without feeling overwhelmed. Even when my time is limited. So much detail and information in 10 minutes. Listen now by searching The Newsworthy in your podcast app or go to thenewsworthy.com. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, hot-headed husbands. When Kayla pushes me too far, they hit it. How would you feel about it? Slaps you down out of the chair. Abused wives. If you knew then what you know now, would you have married him? 
Yes, because I love him. He blames her. He wouldn't slap her if she didn't nag so much. Yes. For making him violent. Do you think it is a reasonable position? No! They're entitled to their opinion. Ask me if I care about their opinion. No, I don't. All new Dr. Phil. That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... is a teen mom, Vincent is a teen dad. Neither one of them have custody of their child. Kayla gave the baby to her mom to raise after she got the idea from watching one of those teen mom reality shows. But is mom's boyfriend Mike the real reason Kayla does not live at home and really have a relationship with her own baby? Take a look at this. I moved out so I don't have to deal with Mike. We butt heads a lot. She's a spoiled brat. Mike is the reason I cannot be with my son. We argue, we fight. It makes it such a stressful environment for my son to be in. She's always been allowed to do whatever she wants. Being around Mike definitely makes me nervous. I'm always, you know, walking on tippy toes around him. I never know what's gonna set him off. Mike will often tell Kayla to leave and never come back. It bothers me that my mom always sides with him. I'm her daughter. I feel like she should at least side with me sometimes. She can set that fuse off fast just by her lack of respect, lack of responsibility. In my opinion, I feel like if you give me respect, I'll give you respect back. I have asked Mike not to leave me alone with her because she badgers me. I don't take glasses down the stairs, that's Sarah. If Kayla doesn't get her way, she will strike out at whoever's standing there. Kayla slapped me. Once Kayla kicked me in the stomach knowing that I had just had abdominal surgery. I feel like if my mom loved Mike, I would move in with my mom. I would be spending more time with my son. So you just think she is immature and is not motivated to be a mother, true? True. And why do you say this? For the reasons I said is there's uh, no respect. There's no commitment to, to anything. She was given a gift. Both Vincent and her were given a gift that, that should be cherished. And I don't see that cherish coming out of them. And you think that position is idiotic because? No. I don't think that's idiotic. Those are very nice words. I agree with them. Because she was a psycho and you, you, no, no, you, no, you no, took no, their no, inventory no, no, pretty no, no, aggressively. No, no, no. I, I, I dislike him for what we've had together before. He's a very angry person. Towards Maybe, me. Towards you and other that. The environment that Maya lives in, there's a lot of anger there. Mm-hmm. So... So you don't go around because he's there? A lot of the time, yes. You think he crosses the boundary with her? Um, there's times that he does say, Kayla, you have to leave because of the conflict there. But she's that way with me. I have said to him, you cannot leave me alone with her. She badgers me. She has always done this. Um, she did realize that... She wanted to be 17, is what she told me, when she wanted me to take care of Milo. I didn't give him to you to be 17 again. I mean, yes, that, you know, what teenager doesn't miss their old life after they have a baby? But I do, again, I do not have a job. I failed cosmetology school. Like, what other reasons do you need to see that I think he is best with you? Like, you guys have raised children. You know what it's like. And I'm stressed out because I need to get my license for one. I can't even take him to doctor's appointments. I honestly feel that with me, without a job, without a car, any of that, what could I be giving him? You could love him, you could nurture him, you could mentor him, you could hold him, you could give him an identity that you were willing to make sacrifices and live with the decisions that you made along with your former boyfriend here. You could do a lot of things with him. So what could you give him? Uh, maybe you can't buy him things, but he could grow up knowing that his mother was always by his side. So what could you do? That's what you could do. You could grow up. I didn't choose for you to have unprotected sex. You two made that choice. And I do think you did it to get on a television show, and I do think you did it to try to trap him. And I do think you did it because you thought 
you would just create this nice little world over there because it's all been glamorized. And you can be as self-righteous and sanctimonious if you want, but if he gets custody, then you're going to become her. You're going to raise that baby because he ain't going to do it. He doesn't he have the that. job. They're going to live with you, and you're going to wind up doing it. No. Yeah. He'll, he'll just yeah. walk from room to room with no buddy to care. You have no clue what goes on in my house. He told me. What did I say? Quit talking you, uh, about my family, you control freak. No. Your daughter and Kayla. A control Kayla. freak? Your daughter and Kayla. Hush. No, don't together. snap at me. Mike, hold on, hold on. If you're and a control Denise. freak, Mom, wait. Denise, if you're, listen, you if he's a control, control freak, then what is he? The you would not let me see Vincent when I was what pregnant. You, you told to me you would me? call the cops on me. What? You told me you'd file a restraining right, order next, against me. So I couldn't see Vincent. Because you're crazy. Because you were 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 crazy. Because Plus, I'm What'd going to reveal three me? crucial things you can tell your you teen today so she won't come home pregnant tonight. And if you're wondering why I'm talking, ignoring all of this, is because it's just blah, 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 blah. We'll be right back. Kayla needs a big reality check. When you have a baby, you give up every other aspect of your life. Your life is your children. We're all here for Milo, but at the end of the day, he needs his mom. We have a lot of fun here in the studio audience, right? We have a lot of fun here. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience, or you can call 323-461-PHIL. From what I've heard, Kayla and her friend were having a race with Vincent and his brother to see who could get pregnant first. I got pregnant a couple months after Kayla did. I love you. Our kids are six months apart. Kayla was very upset about me getting pregnant. She called me and told me I was a bitch, that I was stealing her thunder. I quit having a relationship with Kayla when she gave Milo to mom. You don't just walk out on your kid. Kayla needs a big reality check. When you have a baby, you give up every other aspect of your life. Your life is your children. We're all here for Milo, but at the end of the day, he needs his mom. I don't hate Kayla. I love Kayla. She's my sister. But I hate what she's done. It's not fair to Milo. Stacy is joining us uh, via Polycom right now. Uh, Stacy, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. So tell me, what is it, what is it you have to say? I'll just turn it over to you for a minute. Get to the point. <laughs> Um, Kayla and Vincent both need to step up and be parents, but as far as mom and Mike taking v Milo from Vincent, they didn't do that. Kayla dumped him on mom. You yeah. don't get along with your sister too much. No, I don't. Why not? We cannot be in the same room for very long because we are at each other. She does not like to have hear anything I have to say because I'm outspoken and I will call her on anything that she does. She's not there for Milo, and I don't respect her in any way, shape, or form. All right. Well, I've been listening to everybody else talk, so you need to listen to me talk for a minute here, okay? Because you've had your say, 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 and Stacy, you've had your say. Somebody needs to speak for Milo. Somebody needs to speak for that baby. And that is me. So I'm going to speak for Milo here today and tell you where I think this needs to come down. You need to grow up. Yeah. You need to grow up. You are behaving like a spoiled brat. You can't get along with anybody. There's a fight everywhere you go, and you're the common denominator. You're in every place there's a fight. So that must tell you that you are being immature. You need to grow up. You can delegate the raising of this child to your mother, but you cannot abdicate your role as a mother. That child has one mother, will only have one mother its entire life, and that's you, and there ain't no window you go to to sign out. And you need to grow up and keep your pants zipped up, Slick. Apparently, she's no longer any of your business. I know this. 
Because you've said, I don't want anything to do with her. I don't care who she hooks up with. I I don't care care what she does. I I got 5,000 Facebook friends and 700 standing in line. Can I brag about that? Yes. You guys asked me those questions. Yes. And I told them. Did I say, oh, I have Well, you're showing a lot of maturity right now by smarting off instead of listening. You need to hear me. You need to hear me. You have a child in this world because you were too immature, and so you want to sit here and smart mouth me, boy? I've been listening for something I haven't heard. Not one person here has asked me, Dr. Phil, tell me what I can do better to give this baby a chance to succeed in this world. You didn't ask me that. You didn't say, Dr. Phil, what could I do? And you know what I would have told you you could have done? I would have told you that you could stop being resentful and try to be a consensus builder. You are the grandparent of this precious child. These two kids haven't got sense enough coming out of the rain when it comes to raising a baby. I mean, they don't. They're too immature. They don't know. Can they learn? Absolutely they can. Should they? Absolutely they should. You should go to parenting class. You need to know how to answer questions when they ask them. You need to know what kind of age-appropriate terms to use when you're explaining the world to them. You need to come up with a way to be co-parents so you can be there for this child even though you don't have a relationship between you. And you probably never will, and that's okay. But what you do need to do is get smart and raise this baby. It is not her job. It is your job. It is not his job. It is your job. And I will make arrangements for both of you to have access to parenting classes and to get the help you need to do the things you need to do. We will help you find a job. You have legitimately been looking for a job. People tell me that you have been hard looking for a job. We will help you with that. We will get you the parenting classes. You need to grow up and step up because what you are doing is dead wrong. So that's my two cents worth. When we come back, I'm going to tell you the three most crucial things you need to talk to your teen about today so she won't come home pregnant tonight. We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... If you would like to purchase a DVD or transcript of your favorite Dr. Phil show... Please log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445. 866-437-7445. There are three crucial things that you need to talk to your teen daughter about. And look, this isn't a, a, a conversation. It's an ongoing dialogue. It's really important to tell your teen to value herself enough to not let her body be used for someone's entertainment. Okay, this is important. If your daughter is taught to really value herself enough, it's where she says no for her. Not say no for you, not say no for her dad, not say no because it's wrong, but say no for herself because look, I don't, this isn't a playground, this is my body, this is my future, and I'm not gonna let this become something that we're entertaining ourselves with. You've got to get your daughter to value herself enough to know that. Number two, you need to tell your daughter, if she does love the boy, then don't put him in the teen daddy box. If you, you know, it's, oh, I love him so much. If you really do, you wouldn't change his life in this way. You wouldn't create this problem for him. And number three, let me just tell you, based on statistics, say what you want. The teen father of the baby will not be there for you or the baby. I'm sorry. And if you are a teen father that is the exception to the rule, good for you. Statistically, it's the daughter, it's the mother of the baby that goes through it all. It's her parents that go through it the vast majority of the time. And after the baby's here, you can't find him with both hands. So I'm just telling you, statistically, don't think that that's going to mean the two of you are like that from here on. Now, do you think TV shows about teenage mothers glamorize or prevent unwanted teen pregnancy? I want you to go to drphil.com or our Facebook or Twitter and vote, and you'll instantly see if others feel the same way you do. I'm going to make resources available to you two 
to try to help you guys learn to grow into the role as parents. And I'm going to provide some help for you two to work out your differences so there's not so much tension when you're around the house. Let's put baby Milo first here. Somebody needs to lift this baby up above everybody else's agenda. Thanks for being here. So long. three crucial things that you need to talk to your teen daughter about. And look, this isn't a, a, a conversation. It's an ongoing dialogue. It's really important to tell your teen to value herself enough to not let her body be used for someone's entertainment. Okay? This is important. If your daughter is taught to really value herself enough, it's where she says no for her. Not say no for you. Not say no for her dad. Not say no because it's wrong. But say no for herself because, look, I don't, th this isn't a playground. This is my body. This is my future. And I'm not going to let this become something that we're entertaining ourselves with. You've got to get your daughter to value herself enough to know that. Number two, you need to tell your daughter, if she does love the boy, then don't put him in the teen daddy box. If you, you know, it's, oh, I love him so much. If you really do, you wouldn't change his life in this way. You wouldn't create this problem for him. And number three, let me just tell you, based on statistics, say what you want. The teen father of the baby will not be there for you or the baby. I'm sorry. And if you are a teen father that is the exception to the rule, good for you. Statistically, it's the daughter, it's the mother of the baby that goes through it all. It's her parents that go through it the vast majority of the time. And after the baby's here, you can't find him with both hands. So I'm just telling you, statistically, don't think that that's going to mean the two of you are like that from here on. Now, do you think TV shows about teenage mothers glamorize or prevent unwanted teen pregnancy. I want you to go to drphil.com or our Facebook or Twitter and vote. And you'll instantly see if others feel the same way you do. I'm going to make resources available to you two to try to help you guys learn to grow into the role as parents. And I'm going to provide some help for you two to work out your differences so there's not so much tension when you're around the house. Let's put baby Milo first here. Somebody needs to lift this baby up above everybody else's agenda. Thanks for being here. So long. <laughs>